Greetings, leaders. Welcome to Leadership Is Podcast. I am your host, Jason Muhammad, founder of JM Leadership Development. I'm here to talk to you about Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will even distribute your podcast for you on platforms like Spotify, Apple, and many more. You can even make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make in a podcast in one place. So listen, download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And always remember, leadership is influence and service. And to me, that's kind of like a leadership role because what happens is, and it's it's not... It's not something you intentionally build, but when you find yourself in that lane of consistent support and encouragement and helping people fulfill goals, then more people end up coming to you to communicate their goals or what their questions may be on how to achieve things. Greetings, leaders. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Leadership Is Podcast. I am your host, Jason Muhammad, founder of JM Leadership Development. This is episode 47, What is Leadership? Featuring Matt Matan, owner of Biz Radio Asheville. We're going to be talking about, you know, what is leadership and the different definitions of leadership as there are a multi, you know, millions of definitions of leadership. You know, there, there are as many definitions of leadership than there are people to say it, right? So we want to talk about that today and not only, you know, talk about what is leadership, but really to get an understanding of how to implement principles of leadership. That's what this podcast is all about. So let's talk about it. Greetings, leaders, and thank you for joining us for the episode. Today's guest is Matt Matan. Matt Matan is a longtime broadcaster and writer in Asheville. He is the owner of Biz Radio Asheville, an all-local station for area entrepreneurs and influences, as well as owner of Buzz Radio Asheville, an all-Asheville artist music station. Over the past 25 years in Asheville, Matt has served with many nonprofits, including three terms as president of the Art Space uh, Charter School Section for the Red Cross Board of Directors, Buncombe County Schools Superintendents Advisory Council, and more. Welcome, Matt Matan. Oh, glad to be with you. It's an honor to be on your show. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, we recorded on your show a couple of weeks or so ago, and it was actually an, a, a good uh, experience, you know, excellent experience being on your show there. And we've done it before uh, yeah. as well um, at the place there. So, you know, tell us who, who are you and what you do besides all the mumble jumble that I just gave. Yeah, out. all that, all that bio stuff, the resume stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I'm an Air Force veteran, uh, spent eight years active duty in the military as a medic in the Air Force. And I landed um, in Asheville, thanks to the Air Force. I was stationed in eastern North Carolina for a while. And I'm originally from the Boston area, but left there at like 17, 18 years old and joined the Air Force. And while I was stationed in eastern North Carolina, I found my way out to western North Carolina and immediately knew it was a place that really just connected with me. And uh, it was about five years later when I finished up my, uh, my eight years in the Air Force and I was in Florida at the time that I had to make a decision of where I was going to move. And it pretty much was stay in Florida near the base where I was at, um, or it was going to be moved back to New England. Or the third option, which was the crazy wild one, because I'd only visited there once, was to move to Asheville. So, of course, I chose to move to Asheville. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> And uh, yeah. that was back in the mid-90s. And um, when I got here, I still, I, I had fully intended on pursuing a career in medicine, that's what I had done for eight years in the military, and I fully intended to continue doing that. And since I was going to do that the rest of my life, I figured I want to do something completely different for a year. You know, just take a year to do something completely different. And um, Virgil Smith, who used to be the publisher of the Asheville Citizen Times, had just started on, and I got a chance to meet him and get to know him a bit. And he gave me my first media job, which was at the Asheville Citizen Times, and um uh, from there, uh, he was doing he was doing a lot of radio stuff, and I got a chance to meet people that were doing radio in town back there in the mid '90s. And I would just hang around the studio 
and just talking to folks and I would, you know, empty the trash can if I needed to or whatever. And yeah. it was just a way to kind of meet people and get acquainted with folks in the community that were active and doing cool things like Virgil was. And, and one day um, a person at the radio station said, Hey, you ever thought about doing radio? And I thought they meant sell ads. I, I didn't think right. they meant on air stuff, but that's what they meant. And I said, no. And they said, do you want to try it? And I said, sure. They said, be here at four 30 Monday morning. Haven't just got out of the military. I was like, oh, that's no sweat. Okay, that's fine. I'll be there four thirty in the morning, and that's twenty five years ago. And I'm still doing radio today. And it, it's you know it it's something that when you find something that is what you're supposed to do, everything just kind of clicks in place. It doesn't mean that there aren't challenges or hard lessons learned along the way. But you know, I'm fifty years old now, and I started broadcasting actually when I was sixteen. Um, I, I had my own little uh, thing I was doing up in New England when I was a teenager. Didn't think anything of it other than I just liked to be able to go where I wanted to go for travel and, and have other people pay the bills. So I had a fishing yeah. TV show <laughs> of all things. And wow. uh, then I went in the military. So it, it's just something where, you know, I think finding your lane in life for me, you know, who are you? Who I am is a person that wants to engage with the community and and encourage people and and talk about things that people might have difficulty talking about sometimes in a non you know a non confrontational way. And so over the last twenty five years, that's exactly what I've done. And a couple of times I've strayed away from it a little bit. Uh, you know, God saw foot to uh, you know put the foot to my rear end and get me right back in line with uh, what I'm meant to do, which is broadcasting. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And your story kind of sounds a little like Les Brown's story. To be uh, to be transparent, it's like you know what he did to get um, on 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 the radio uh, as well as just kept showing up and asking them, uh, you know, uh, if they have jobs available. And then all of a sudden, one day they just told him, "Just go get me some coffee." And ever since then, he was there. And then one day there was a guy who uh couldn't do the radio show and so then you know he was able to do it once he called and he was on the radio at that while so yeah that opportunity people have to you know the 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 story the point that i get from both of you story is that you have to be ready for the opportunity when it presents itself mm -hmm. um and so definitely so um, yeah, somebody said, that, I, I just want to respond to that real quick. Somebody, I remember one time having a conversation with someone and, you yeah. know, when you, when you follow your heart, when you, when you move by faith and you follow that purpose, that calling, that gravity, it means there's challenges along the way because it's part of what prepares you for whatever it is you're meant to do next. And, and so I remember, you know, that means you go through tides, you know, there's some times where it, it looks like it's going awesome. And other times you're like, why am I doing this? And yeah, I was at yeah. one of those high points, you know, making lots of money, getting all kinds of media coverage. People are like, oh man, how are you so lucky? And I, and, and I remember thinking one, I know it's not permanent because this moves like the tide. It comes and goes. And I know that I've done it long enough to know that. But also I, I said then, and I, and I still repeat it now. What other people call luck is what I call when preparedness and opportunity meet. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So being here in Western North Carolina, I have, you know, you and I've had several conversations and you've told me about some of your leadership journeys uh, here and uh, this being a leadership podcast. You know, what, what is your definition of leadership? I think for me um, and what I what I try to be for the people that I work with, leadership to me is being able to identify and then fill a support role for other people to realize their goals, you know. And so whereas I think when I was younger, I used to think leadership was getting up there on the soapbox and saying, come on, everybody, follow me. And, yeah. and, you know, now, you know, I've got a few more years under my belt and I find that the more lasting changes that happen to move the bar forward for our community and 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 different things is to find that support role. And if if you can find ways to encourage support or streamline or open doors or anything for other people that are on their own path of purpose, to me, that's yeah. more of what leadership is at this point in my life is by finding the ways that I can either create platforms through my experience and, and my talents that help elevate other people in pursuit of their goals, then to me, that's kind of like a leadership role. Because what happens is, and it's, it's, not, 
it's not something you intentionally build, but when you find yourself in that lane of consistent support and encouragement and helping people fulfill goals, then more people end up coming to you to communicate their goals or what their questions may be on how to achieve things. And you have the opportunity to then positively impact other people's journey. And so for me, that's kind of, if, if I'm going to try to define in actions what leadership is, it's finding the ways through your, your skills, your talents, your resources, your experience, how to best serve the goals and aspirations of other people and of your community. Yeah, that sounds, you know, a lot like a book that I read. And, and it just kind of helps me, right, with my confirmation of uh, the, 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 the common silver line that's between, you know, uh, all people's definition of leadership that I hear so many, uh, you know, different ways of how to say, like, maybe one to three different things about what leadership truly is. And reminds me of a book that I read from uh, Patrick Lencioni uh, called The Motive. And it's, you know, why so many leaders abdicate their most important responsibilities. And it's really about discovering why you want to be a leader and, uh, you know, what is actual leadership. And so that's good that you that you said. Yeah, because, I think you know, you mentioned Les Brown. And, and if I remember right, Les Brown served a little bit of time, you know, as a representative. Um, you know, I, I, right. I don't remember if it was State House or if it was U.S. Congress. I apologize. I can't remember. But it, it was, was a State House. OK. Yeah. So. I, I think, you know, and, and I, I don't know for sure, but I think probably life journeys um, will indicate to people like, oh, well, I should take this experience and everything and I should get in a leadership role and put that in air quotes and end up serving yeah. in a House of Representatives or on a city council and everything. And sometimes that might be the worst path for someone to go in their ability to impact <laughs> things because, you know, they end up not being able to really freely follow you know, the mojo of what's going on or what's led them to that point, you know, so I, I think he, he only served maybe one or two terms and, but yet look at what, you know, look at what was accomplished post that, <laughs> you know, you Absolutely. know, so it's one of the Absolutely. things, you know, you mentioned in the resume part about all the different boards I've served on and leadership positions. And again, that other version of leadership, you know, I would consider more management, yeah. um, you know, and, and, and I think along the way, that was something that I felt like, oh, well, that's what I'm supposed to do. That's kind of the path that society sets for you. You get to a certain point of success or experience, and you're expected to step into certain roles and help take that next chapter along the way. But I have found now, I mean, I don't serve on boards officially. Instead, what I do is I have relationships with people that are the chairs or the secretaries or vice presidents or, you know, anything like that and say, how can I yeah. support you through the network I have, the experiences, the, you know, all the different things, how can I lift them up? And therefore I have relationships with 15, 20 different people that are in influential positions. You know, it's, it's, there's a story about a multicolored robe, you know, in the Bible and it's, you know, and, and, and instead of being in those yes, positions, right. I find that I can be more impactful for moving the bar forward. If I am in a support role for people that have those important positions. Yeah, very good. Now you mentioned a lot about, you know, the state and, and government and other, so it, it kind of, it's a good segue into this, this other one is how critical uh, is good leadership in this day and time, you know, with all that we're facing with the social unrest, uh, injustice and um, the political and the COVID, you know, the pandemic, like how critical is good leadership in this day and time? Well, uh, you know, I think that if you look at leadership in the way that I just defined it for me in action, yeah. I think that it's more critical than ever. I see a lot of people that hold positions of influence and in government that want to get in front of the microphone and the cameras and try to articulate the frustrations or the concerns or the divisions that exist and not really follow through a whole lot with servicing the need that's there. And mm -hmm. so I, I feel like the type of leadership that I, that I try to live up to that I, I, that I aspire to, I think it's more critical than ever that we see good leadership in the sense of, 
you know, shut up and listen is something somebody said one time, you know, really mm-hmm. listen and then look at the the avenues of connections and experiences and resources that you have in that position where how can you lift up the people in the community that are taking on the role of addressing these things, whether it's through infrastructure and and educational systems or, you know, redress of grievances or accountability for different actions. You know, if you're in elected office, specifically in government positions, rather than trying to offer the solutions, how about use the resources available to you and the relationships to throw support behind the people that are doing it? And and there is some of that going on, but I think there's, there's a lot more room for that, because a lot of people that self-identify as leaders, they call themselves leaders. I see them doing a lot more talking than listening. And I think essential to yeah. leadership is the ability to listen and then act on what you hear from people and and bounce back to them saying, all right, here's what I'm doing. Is this helpful? Is this what you needed? Is this working? And And that is not a podium conversation. That's a one-on-one or a group-to-one conversation, and I don't see I don't see enough of that happening right now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, I I agree. That's right, and that's uh, that's is and that is critical. Yeah, <laughs> that's absolutely critical. So, for our audience, if you can give us three uh, leadership tips that you know for new or even seasoned leaders could actually uh, take off? Um, well, I'll just share three uh, practical tips that help me. Um, number one is time okay. management. Um, for me yeah. to be effective, I have to organize my time. I've got to have structure to it. So uh, I, I use a combination of what's called block scheduling, where I set up my calendar, where there's different segments of different days that are for specific purposes. So, you know, because I'm running a few different businesses, there's a lot of things to keep track of. But I'm also a dad yes. and a partner, <laughs> you know, and, and I got to have time for family, right. too. And and that's important to me for, you know, for my spiritual and mental and physical health, I've you know, and, and, and everything else. I've got to balance that out. But time management is really important. So I block out if, if I have if I have paperwork stuff, I've got to do finance stuff. I've got to do building new relationships. If it's production work for the stations, if it's meeting with my staff, I have different blocks of time that I, that I allocate for those different functions. That way I'm more focused and it holds me accountable. If I'm heading toward a day where I see there's openings in there, it's like, Oh, I haven't put enough work toward this lane. So, so that's, right. that's something that I find is a, is a good tip for how I keep track of some different things. Another thing is having some kind of information technology management of keeping track of all the different relationships and the contacts and whether it's clients or if it's people that you network with or anything, there are a lot of different things out there. Some people use things like Salesforce for client relationship management and everything. I, I use a few different things, but one that is really easy, it's inexpensive, and it really helps to organize the relationships that you have. Because I don't know about other folks, but yeah. my brain is not reliable enough to keep track of everything. <laughs> you know. So the calendar mm-hmm. is one thing, the time management. But then I also use a, I use a program a web service. It's cloud-based called PipeDrive. Um, it's really inexpensive. Okay. It's very intuitive. If you if you like diving deep into stuff and getting complicated, you can. But if it's simple as just managing your contacts and being able to make notes and schedule things off that that'll synchronize with your calendar, that that is a um, that's a good tool. And you know, I I find it it really helps me be efficient again with my time, but also holds me accountable because I can set reminders. It's almost like a it's like a digital. Um, to-do list that yells at me if I don't follow through on something, you know? And then the third thing is just an ongoing practice of listening, seeking out what people think or feel about whatever's going on in the community. Because if you want to serve in a leadership role in the way that, that I'm talking about, you know, from my perspective, you've got to be out there and you've got to have open ears, open eyes, and an open heart. And so if you carry the spirit of a servant, then you've got to be looking for where the needs are. And so if you're not actively engaged and seeking people out and asking questions and paying attention, then you're not going to have the ability to apply the experiences, resources, or relationships that you have to support good things happening that you want to get behind. 
Yeah, excellent perspective, Matt. Thank you so much. Uh, do you have any closing comments, uh, you know, last statement of closing comments and contact info for our listeners of how they can, you know, listen to your podcast, your radio, or, you know, even support. Well, your thank calls. you. Uh, first off, I want to thank you for doing what you're doing, you know, and stepping forward and creating another platform where people are able to, you know, bounce things off each other, hear different people's perspectives, learn some things, maybe get reminded of some things and and also identify different people in the community that can connect with each other. You know, one thing about our community Absolutely. that I have found over these 25 years that I've been, you know, active here in town is that people are more than willing. Most people are more than willing to talk and share what they've learned or share contacts or anything like that. So if you never reach out, yeah. then you're never going to be able to plug into that. And so, you know, so That's thank right. you for doing what you're doing. Uh, I would also be a terrible businessman if I did not do a little elevator pitch. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. I want to invite yeah. people to check out Biz Radio Asheville. So it's just uh, www.bizradioasheville.com. And if you're an entrepreneur, a manager, or self-employed, maybe you want to become self-employed. Maybe you want to be more efficient uh, as an employee or anything like that. Our station is all local. It's 24 hours, seven days a week, local conversations, lots of local shows. And it's all about the journey we're on together as a community. It's not like today on Wall Street. That's not what this business station is. This is heart and blood and soul, um, the personal stories and journeys that we're all going through as a community. And then the other station, Buzz Radio Asheville, is all local artists of all styles. People say, what's your genre? We say Asheville. You know, so whether you're going from country <laughs> music to hard rock, from classical to hip hop, from, you know, I mean, it's it's all over the map. The common thread in it is that it's all local and and all original Very music. Good. So, you know, I want to invite people to check that out. Buzzradioashville.com. That's with two Z's. And, uh, you know, we'd, we'd love to hear from folks and have you engage. Going back to serving the needs, we saw the business community needed a full time commercial platform that was just their own, that was local and could help, um, you know, promote and connect and everything else. So we serve that need by doing that on Buzz Radio Asheville. The artists in our community, especially over the last year, have really suffered. And so we took the experience and the capabilities we had to create a station, a professional station for just local artists. And so, again, serving a need we saw in the community. Um, if anybody wants to reach out to me, um, probably the easiest way to do that is by email. And so it's Matt Matan show at gmail.com. That's Matt and then M I T T A N, kind of like a tan mitt, but flip the other way. Matt Matan show at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from folks. And if you know of, uh, you know, some stories or businesses or, uh, you know, situations that should be put out there on a platform in front of, you know, what, 30,000 plus people that we have listening to the station every month, um, I would love to help highlight uh, the good news in town. Very good. Hey, listen, Matt Matan, we thank you very, very much, sir, for your time and talent and uh, sharing with us today. And uh, yeah, learned a lot, man. So looking forward to talking with you soon. And of course, you know, you always have an open invitation thank you, sir. to this show. Absolutely. Take care. Are you promoting the right people into leadership positions? How do you know? How do you measure the outcomes and are they the outcomes you're looking for? Please visit www.jmleadershipdevelopment.com. Again, www.jmleadershipdevelopment.com and request a half hour conversation to assess if we can address your leadership development needs. Oh, and by the way, always remember that leadership is influence and service. Hey, greetings, leaders, and thank you for enjoying another episode of Leadership Is Podcast. We have with us today Matt Matan, who is the owner of Biz Radio Asheville, and he gave us three leadership tips, which I would like to recap on right now. He stated that number one is time management, and he says he uses what is called block scheduling to do his time management. The number two leadership skill, he said, was finding a good IT resource to manage your contacts as as you're building relationships. And he says a resource that he uses is called Pipe Drive. 
pipe drive, right? And so then the third leadership tip he gave was ongoing practicing of listening. And of course, that is so critical, especially in this day and time, you know, with this COVID-19 pandemic and social unrest and all of the other things that leaders are faced with today, listening is a critical skill. So here at JM Leadership Development, our primary goal is to invite next generation leaders to leave the bench, embrace a growth mindset towards leadership, and lead with confidence. If you would like for us to do virtual assessment trainings or presentations for your hidden leaders or keynote your next event, contact us for a free half-hour conversation at info at jmleadershipdevelopment.com. Visit our website, www.jmleadershipdevelopment.com, or call us at 828-333-7234, and we will respond promptly. Please subscribe to this podcast using Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts using Jason A. Muhammad slash Leadership Is. Please follow us on social media. Twitter is at LeadershipJM. Facebook and Instagram is JM Leadership Development. Oh, and by the way, always remember leadership is influence and service.